Hi YouTube, uh, this is Kaigo1324 back today with uh, part 2 of the underrated and hidden gems on the PS2. Again, just what I'd mention, these, some of these games aren't, uh, I wouldn't say hidden gems, but games that people just may not talk about um, anymore or just <clears throat> I reckon you should give a go if you're a PS2 collector. Um, so I've got a few more here, it took me a while to sort them all out, but it's okay, I mean, I, I, I didn't mind doing it. So let's just get straight into it. The first one is Kesson. Um, Kesson is actually a really good strategy game on the PS2. Um, it's hard to do real-time strategy on the PS2 or any console other than a computer, but this works really well, Kesson. There's three Kesson games, and I've um, played... Um, this one and I might have played a part of the second one it's made by Koei or Koei or whatever you want to call it um, <clears throat> this one's obviously based more on the like samurai type um, army it's a really fun game actually you get to do um, it's not really, really building up an army it's more it's more like a, um, I guess you could say a tactical RTS game sort of thing real-time tactics strategy game really good Kesson one of the best on the PlayStation 2 next up we've got RC Revenge Pro uh, one of my if I had to check name my top 10 games this would be in there um, I love this game it's so fun I played so much of this um, I believe RC Revenge was on the PS1 and then this one was a sort of updated one with better graphics and more levels fantastic racing game using RC cars a game that you don't really hear a lot of people talk about when they're talking about racing games. This one's a good one. If you're looking for something, if you like RC type or kart racing games or something like that, give this one a go. It's actually pretty fun. Uh, next one is Death Jam Vendetta. Um, again, a game that obviously people know this game is good, but just don't hear a lot of people mention this one. Um, it's like if you took wrestling and fighting games if you've played wwe all stars um it's very similar to that um really fast over the top but really fun game actually uh using like uh hip-hop artists like dmx Ludacris, and stuff like that still pretty fun game next is deadly strike i didn't even know this game existed um i managed to pick it up last year it's a it plays similar to a one of those 2.5 um, D like beat 'em up style games or hack and slash like like what you would like Streets of Rage and stuff like that. Surprisingly, um, an okay game. It's nothing amazing, but if you if you like if you like old beat 'em up style games, you you might like this one. Deadly Strike. Next is The Warriors, one of the best um, movie games. In, in many people's opinions, um, Rockstar game, uh, this is getting expensive now, I managed to get it for £2, but it's going up in price, I've heard, especially the PS2 version, um, multi-platform game, but still a fantastic game, uh, I wouldn't say open world, but somewhat open world, beat em up, um, co-op game, really good to the Warriors, one of the best um, movie games out there. Next we got True Crime New York City. Now I know this game is is with isn't without its flaws, but um the, the True Crime Streets of LA was a game that I played so much with a kid. Playing it now it's shit. This one is still um quite bad, but it's not too bad. Um I know on the Xbox there was a glitch on the Xbox version where the game would crash and you could never complete it. Um I used to love playing this game. It's like GTA, but you're a cop, uh, an undercover cop. I used to love playing this game. It's still a game that it, it sort of holds up quite well today. Not too bad. Next we have FIFA Street 2. Um, in my opinion, probably one of the best football games ever made. I'm not a big football fan by any means, but this was one I played so much of as a kid, and even today it holds up. It plays similar to maybe... Um, if you like Mario Strikers on like the GameCube or the Wii, you, you probably would like this game because it's sort of got an arcade feel. I love this game because you could do a lot of customization on this game. 
creating your own stadiums, teams, uh, clothes. Really fun actually, still holds up. And the last one on that pile was um, the sum of all fears. Surprisingly, actually, not too bad a game actually. Um, nothing amazing. If you like Ghost Recon or Rainbow Six games like that, it's one of them, like a tactical shooter. Um, surprisingly, not too bad actually. It's um, really cheap as well, but give this one a go. It's sort of like you use squad based systems. It's not as in depth as Ghost Recon, but it's it's in a game that I actually surprised was surprised me it was quite good. Next one here is Black. Um, no, a lot of people say this is one of the best first person shooters on PS2. Um, I might have to agree. This is a really good PS2 game, um, made by EA, um, surprisingly. Um, first person shooter, this has, this was considered to be one of the best PS2 games. If you hear people talking about um, PS2 games that are really good, this one, as you can see, it says there, 10 out of 10. Um, would I give it a 10 out of 10? Um, now, I'd probably give this game maybe an 8 or 8.5. It's good. But it's really impressive for the PS2. But Black, try that one out. Uh, next one is one of my favourite first person shooters. Um, excuse me. Uh, Warhammer 40,000 Fire Warrior. So you're playing as a Tau Fire Warrior. You don't know who Tau are. They're an alien race in the um, Warhammer universe. Pretty much one of those guys on the front. That's who you are. Um, you have to fight Imperial Guard. Space Marines and Chaos in this game. It's a first person shooter. I just thought I'd mention this one because there are some good Warhammer games on console and this is one of them. Next we have Spartan Total Warrior. Sega game. Um, one of my favourite hack and slash games on the PS2 other than Dynasty Wars. I played this game so much on the PS2, GameCube. Um, but I just thought I'd mention this. This is uh, your obviously your Spartan. If you've played um, Shadow of Rome, it you probably like this game, it's really good, hack and slash, just killing loads of enemies, um, really fun game actually, really good, in my opinion, um, a very underrated game, you don't hear a lot of people talk about that. Next we have Flipnik, um, I don't think I've actually tried this one out yet, but I've heard good things about this, um, Metal Jesus actually said this is one of the, uh, one of the best pinball games you can get, it's a pinball game but it's very very unique it has sort of um like a i guess you can say like a campaign to it flipnik it's called if you if you like pinball games give this one a go next we have sniper elite the original um in my opinion this is one of the most impressive games that i've ever played on ps2 in terms of um ai because the ai on this game is fantastic they really do hunt you down on this game um, you really need to sort of move around, take cover. You can't just run up at people. This is a—it's actually quite a challenging game as well. I know Sniper Elite games have always been okay, um, but this one is for PS2, really good Sniper Elite. It's getting uh, about five pounds and up. You can find this for, but still, a really good one there. Uh, impressive for the PS2. Next we have Scarface: The World Is Yours, another movie title. But surprisingly really good. It's open world GTA clone. Um, it's quite it's quite unique because you get to play as Tony Montana of course. But then you can do things like where you go and you play as like his um, henchman. And you do missions as the henchman and stuff like that. Really good open world game. Sort of has um, uh, quite somewhat arcade-ish elements in it as well. But really good on there. Next we have a hidden gem in my opinion, um, a game that you a lot of people don't even know existed. Um, I, I was just lucky to find this game for a pound because I'd never seen this game anywhere else. A Namco game called Urban Rain, it's a beat em up game similar to maybe um, the Wu-Tang Clan game on the PS1. But really fun game, really um, quite impressive for the PS2. Hidden gem in my opinion, not many people know about this game. If you like beat em up games, give this one a go. Um, there's over 60 characters and you can be a uh, Martial Law from and Paul Phoenix from the uh, um, Tekken game, Namco of course. Um, really good game there. It, it's 
somewhat gets challenging. I've done a few levels on there. Next we have Army Men Sarge's Heroes 2. I just thought I'd mention this one because not many people talk about the Army Men games. And in my opinion, the Army Men games were one of my favourite series. I love the Army Men games. It's just... You, you know, like the little plastic army men you used to play with. I used to play with them all the time as a kid. Um, you know, like the army men in Toy Story. It's pretty much if you took that and made a game out of that. There's loads of army men games on multiple systems. I just thought I'd mention uh, Sarge's Hero 2 on PS2. Uh, an upgraded version from the PS1 game. But still, these games are really fun, actually. I love the army men games. I'd love to have all of them. Next we have Justice League Heroes, um, a beat em up game using the Justice League. If you, you're a fan of Marvel Ultimate Alliance, in my opinion, the best Marvel game out there, um, you probably would like this game. It's not as good as Marvel Ultimate Alliance. You don't get a lot of um, really a lot of choice in characters. Obviously, you get to play as the seven Justice League characters: uh, Santana, Superman, Martian Manhunter. Uh, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Flash, Batman and Green Arrow. Um, so yeah, eight characters. I think he can be Green Arrow, I'm not sure. He's on the back, so I assume you can be him. You might be able to be him, might be an unlockable. Um, but yeah, it's beat em up style, similar to maybe Marvel Ultimate Alliance. If you like that, give this one a go. It's not amazing by any means, but it's an okay game. Next we have one of my favourite World War II shooters on PS2, uh, Medal of Honor Rising Sun. I love to play in this game, it's really good. Um, even today it holds up quite well actually, surprisingly. Um, it's, uh, it has a multiplayer co-op campaign, so you can do two player co-op campaign. The multiplayer has bots, so you can still do um, offline as well. Love playing this game, I love using the... Um, there was one where you had a weapon set where you could only use the rail, uh, rail rod, which is an, a silenced um, pistol in World War Two, and on this game it's a one-hit kill. So it's kind of like the Golden Gun from um, James Bond. Really good game, actually. Not many people talk about that. Next is State of Decay. Um, not State of Decay. State of Emergency. Um, in my opinion, one of the funnest games you'll ever play on PS2. Um, it's just chaos. Um you know, chaos redefined in my opinion. It's just, um, you go around just killing loads of people, blowing shit up. Really, really common game as well, um, but underrated in my opinion. Not many people talk about this game. Uh, one of the best games on PS2. Um, if you watch the top 100 PS2 video, this game would probably be in there. Um, if I just want to mention it, I want to get the second one. I haven't seen the second one um, in a long time and I want to get that one. So when I go shopping next week, I'll have a look because I know they don't have it in tech in town. Next we have Star Wars Bounty Hunter. So Jango Fett was one of those characters in Star Wars that we saw and we thought he was awesome. Like, honestly, like Boba Fett, Boba Fett and Jango Fett, we look at them and think those guys are awesome. But they didn't really shine in the movies. They were in the movies for about like a little, maybe like not even five minutes or whatever. Um... Django Fett was a little bit more, had a little bit more in there. Um, and we wanted to see them, how awesome they were. If you like, if you, if you like Django Fett as a character and you want to play Django Fett, play this one. It's really good. Um, um, one of the better Star Wars games as well. Um, kind of a hidden Star Wars gem. Not many people talk about this one. I really hope they make a, a second one at some point with a uh, Boba Fett. Um, the closest thing that we might have to that would be, um, Star Wars 1337, which might be revived, actually, surprisingly. Next we have Maximo, Army of Zin. Um, I do have the first one, but I just thought I'd take this one out because it was closest. Um, so this is a um, sequel to um, Ghosts and Goblins, or Ghouls and Goblins, that really hard arcade game that was on Sega, um, NES you know, Super Nintendo, but this is a 3D version of this, and let me tell you something, this game is tough, like Ghouls and Goblins, it is tough, um, some people might say it's a bit easier than Ghouls and Goblins, I could see that, um, I played a little bit of it here, but surprisingly, really good, uh, 3D action platformer, 
um, using that Ghouls and Goblins style universe to it, but surprisingly hard, but fun actually. Uh, next we have Cart... Sorry, Cart Fury Championship Racing. Uh, when I brought a PS2 off my mate Ryan, he, this was one of the games that he that he had. and he, It's a very arcade style um, kart racing game. Uh, well, not kart racing, but like indie car type thing, Formula One. This game is very arcade. -y. If you like arcade racing games, give this one a go. It is fast paced, but surprisingly challenging. Um, I don't think I've... I think I've only came first like once in this game. It is like an arcade game. It does take a long time to get those wins. Um, next we have, again, like I mentioned in my Xbox video, 50 Cent Bulletproof. Um, in my opinion, a, a very um, underrated game. Um, the 50 Cent games have always been... Um, never been sp nothing special, but they've been games that you can play and... You can play through them and not feel like you're just doing it because it's a game that you just want to tick off. You somewhat enjoy it and this is the same. It's more of a top-down shoot um, action game. Similar similar to maybe um, The Warriors, I guess. I think. I I'm, I'm know the PSP one is, but I'm not sure about this one. Next we have Midway Arcade Treasures 3. There's, I had the first one. Um, and not the second one, but I recommend this one for one reason only. It has Hydro Thunder in it. Um, if you don't know what Hydro Thunder is, it's a jet boat racing game. And it is amazing. Let me tell you that. It is one of my favourite racing games. But it also comes with... Um, uh, it comes with eight racing games. The two main ones are Rush, The Rock and Hydro Thunder. It comes with Super Off-Road, Badlands, Race Driving, Stun, Stun Runner... San Francisco Rush 2049 and Off-Road Thunder, Mud, Sweat and Gears. Really good compilation of arcade racing games. Get this if you want to play Hydro Thunder because it's really cheap as well. And next we have Shrek 2. Um, hear me out on this one. Um, really, actually, surprisingly fun game. Um, it uses that sort of four-player um, switch between characters similar to maybe Marvel Ultimate Alliance, I guess. Um, but surprisingly, this game is really fun. Um, I used to play this a lot as a kid, and I could never really get past the Puss in Boots fight, actually, um, where you have to just tap the buttons in time, and I could never do that as a kid. But Shrek 2 on the PS2 is surprisingly fun, actually. Um, I don't know how good the other Shrek games are, but this one is pretty fun, sort of. Drop in, drop out, beat them up. You can be like Shrek, Donkey, Puss in Boots, um, Fiona, the Gingerbread Man, that sort of thing. It is funny to go around just beating people up with the Gingerbread Man. He's this little like Gingerbread Man with his candy cane. It's funny. Um, so yeah, that was a good one. Next we have X-Men Legends 2 Rise of Apocalypse. Um, if you like Marvel Ultimate Alliance, it's very similar to that. Um, let me tell you, this game is very similar to Marvel Ultimate Alliance. But a game that, in my opinion, it is a clone of Marvel Ultimate Alliance. But um, using X-Men characters. And I know you can unlock Iron Man in this game as well. Um, you can be people like Juggernaut. Um, like Magneto. Bishop, I think. Wolverine, Storm, some pretty common characters. You can also be a uh, Deadpool in this game. It's an unlockable. So you get to be some characters from the dark, from the Brotherhood of um, Mutants and the uh, X Men. Surprisingly good game, actually. Um, very similar to Marvel Ultimate Alliance, but still worth it. Next we have Metal Arms, a glitch in the system. Um, again, this is a game that I don't think I might I might have played before, but a game that I mentioned. It's a third-person action shooter slash platforming game, similar to maybe Ratchet and Clank. Uh, Ratchet and Clank 2 actually was one of my favourite Ratchet and Clank games. I used to play the two-player mode, the one where you have the little base. Um, I used to play that a lot, actually. It might have been two or three, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd mention this one because I've heard this is good as well. Next we have The Herb, Sims in the City. Um, the Sims games have always been... A favourite for me. I love the Sims universe. Um, I do want to play. Get all of them. I'm missing. 
I know the fir I know my first one doesn't work. So I might have to get that resurfaced and I know I'm missing Sims 2 pets and Sims 3 and then the Game Boy ones. Um but the Herb Sims in the City is a completely different Sims game. So instead of living up in a house, you're living in an apartment, but so this game is pretty much urban sims so you get to choose like where you're from so you can be like a punk like, like a punk skater or you can be like a hip-hop guy or you can be like a fashion designer and you have to go around to these different um, cities and areas where you have to do um, quests to get like uh, where you actually do um, you where you actually do um, the jobs it's just pretty much you just tap the buttons on the screen but surprisingly the herbs is a really good sims game you don't hear a lot of people talk about it if you love the sims give the herbs a go it's something different it's different enough there's not much in terms of customization and stuff like that and you can't really build your own house or anything but if you want to play a sims game that um offers some sort of story to it this one's quite fun um black eyed peas obviously this would um, Will I Am is in this game, and you could even use the eye toy um, to get your face on this game. And I assume you can use um, like have your face and on posters and stuff if you wanted to, I guess. Next we have Crazy Frog Racer One and Two. Um, Crazy Frog, obviously, if you don't know who Crazy Frog was, he was this really big hit in the like early two thousands, like two thousand and like two to. Five, I guess I can't remember um, he was like a techno sort of he was just really weird and they called him the annoying frog um, but this is a kart racing game version of it and actually surprisingly um, fun actually believe it or not kart racing games have always been quite fun and this is actually surprisingly a good one I have it on Game Boy I want to give it a go on Game Boy and see what it's like on Game Boy Next we have Destroy of Humans 2. Um, the first one is fantastic as well, but I just put this one up for because um, you can do co-op on this. Destroy of Humans is... So, if you took the B movie, like the B sci-fi movies, you know, like the movies that go straight to TV, like AE style, um, this is what you get. So, you're pretty much this alien crypto and you just can... You have to do missions, like, and use all these different powers, like turning to people so they don't know who you are that you're an alien and you, or you can just go around destroying stuff which is what I do and it's um there's a weapon in this game um where you shoot like an anal probe and it sticks up someone's ass and you see well you don't see it actually stick up their ass but you see it and they start running and their head just explodes it's actually pretty um funny actually uh, next we have 1945 1 and 2 the arcade game a really good shmup on the um, PS2 actually obviously 1945 is one of my favorite shmups and uh, this one's really good it is in my opinion I've, I'm, I'm not sure if this is an exact copy of the arcade version but it looks really um, really similar to what the arcade version would be if you're into shmups and you want to try something um, which is fast paced and this game is co-op as well really good shmup on the uh, PS2. Next we have Ghost Hunter. Um, you'll hear this one a lot in um, Hidden Gems videos. It's, um, I guess you could say Ghostbusters but not Ghostbusters. So you're going around fighting monsters and things like that but you have to fight like um, ghosts and this is considered to be a hidden gem actually. You don't hear a lot of people talk about this one. It's really cheap it is a horror game, but it's not that scary. It's, it, it's only a 12, so it's nothing really scary, but a good one there. Um, got three more. And next we have The Incredibles, Rise of the Underminer. Um, I know what you're thinking. Really? The Incredibles? I know the movie was fantastic. The Incredibles was one of the best uh, Pixar movies. Um, this game is a big step up from the original Incredibles game. The original Incredibles wasn't that great of a game. Um, this one is much better. Um, so it, you can co-op, which I don't think the first one was co-op. So you play as Mr. Incredible and Frozone. 
and it plays like a beat em up game um action beat em up game really fun to play co-op i played a ton of this back in the day um really really good game it's really cheap as well you can pick this game up really cheap uh, next we have Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. I've heard this is really good on Game Boy. I've got it on Game Boy. I'll give it a go. Um, hear me out on this. I know people will be like, oh my god, it's a Star Wars. Modern Star Wars. Not, it's a prequel. I like all the Star Wars movies. I actually like this movie. I saw it in the cinema. Um, so it's a hack and slash game. A game you can play two player as well. Um, so... You, you pretty much, it follows the movie quite well actually, um, I'll give it that, it does follow the movie quite well. The reason I thought I'd mention this is because it's a it's an okay hack and slash game, but you have some really cool unlockable modes in this game, like where there's a mode where you can play as a Magna Guard, um, which is, you know, those Grievous Bodyguards otherwise known, you know, those droids with the Electro Staffs. Um, and this has a really cool unlockable mode where you play one on one. It's like a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, and you can be um, the characters from there. There is some added um, characters in this game that weren't in the movie, so it has some levels in this that um, doesn't follow the movie, so it's some unique characters in there. Um, you, there's a really cool mission when you complete the game. You can So the, the final fight in this game is the Anakin versus Obi-Wan duel on Mustafar. Um, but you can, if you complete it, you can do it again, but you can be Anakin and kill Obi-Wan and then you get a different ending, so an alternative ending to Star Wars, which would have just been, people would have lost their mind. But probably one of the coolest things is when you complete the game, you get to do the Obi-Wan versus Darth Vader duel, um, from Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope, or just Star Wars, um, where you actually play as Darth Vader versus old Kenobi, and then you can do that all over again if you want with the um verses. So you can be like, I know it's Obi Wan, um, Obi Wan, Anakin, Mace Windu, Darth Vader, old old Obi Wan or Ben Kenobi, um, Count Dooku, General Grievous, and then there's these two characters that aren't in the movie. I can't remember their name. I know one of those characters was in another Star Wars game. And the last game here is Area 51. A really, really good game actually. So, it's a first person shooter, obviously a sci-fi game. Um, it's, so you're fighting aliens and stuff. I used to love playing the two play on this game, um, the multiplayer mode. It's, it's very unique. You get to unlock um, abilities where you can use Get alien abilities and be like the aliens really good game actually um a must own in my opinion if you're getting a ps2 area 51 so that's pretty much all of the hidden gems or underrated games that i have on my ps2 um i'm really looking forward to next to, till thursday because i'm going to be going to that game shop and i've decided what i'm going to do um sorry i'll knock my card down um, I've decided what I'm going to do on Thursday is I might not get that Warhammer this time. I might get it another time. Because um, in that local pawn shop they had about 20 or so Game Boy Advance games. Most of them were $1.99 a piece. Um, and a few Game Boy Color and Game Boy games. Um, I've decided I'm just going to buy all of them. Um, I don't know how much it will come to. It probably comes to maybe £45 or something. They might give me a bundle deal. Um, which I'm hoping they do. Um, so yeah, I'll be picking that up, be going to that other game shop and finding some more, um, games. I'm hoping that I can find some, uh, RPGs on the PS2 and Game Boy and stuff. I'm really, one game that I really want to find actually is Dark Cloud. Um, one of the early, uh, I believe it was a release game for the PS2. Um, I haven't seen that game in ages and I remember playing a demo and thinking it was awesome. So if anyone knows... Um, a good place to get Dark Cloud, whether I should just look for it or buy it online, just let me know. Um, so yeah, there'll be that video on Thursday. I'm not sure what I'm going to do this week. I will definitely do a WrestleMania predictions a video um, or WWE update video this week actually because WrestleMania is Sunday and I can't wait for that. So yeah, 
thanks for watching please like subscribe and um just thanks for all of the um support on the channel um i know it's it's rising slowly but i'm really enjoying doing these videos and uh, it's just really nice to hear to see, to see people watching the videos and giving thumbs up um i know the quality of my videos it's well it's, it's an okay quality i'm using an um samsung galaxy alpha um it works fine but i am looking towards getting um some uh equipment um soon uh it's just trying to make room so if i do like game recordings i might have to do it downstairs just because there's more room um and uh, i'm hoping to get a retron 5 soon because i watched some videos on someone i watched cji yesterday and he, he was saying that it was actually a pretty good system actually and i know some people are hit and miss on that console but i just figured i'll do it so i can play my game boy games on the big screen tv which would always be nice as well i mean i love to play it on the handheld but it's still nice to be able to play a game like pokemon on the big screen or something um so yeah just rambling so i'll end the video now uh thanks like subscribe and have a nice day